Hi everyone, Exotic PC here coming at you with another video review. Today we are checking out MSI's GE70 Apache Pro 681. It's a 17.3 inch computer. The screen is a 1920 by 1080 matte type screen. For our hardware, we're looking at an Intel i7 4720HQ, 2.6 to 3.6 gigahertz. That is soldered on, so it cannot be upgraded. For the video cards, it's NVIDIA's GTX 960M. 2 gigabyte version and this is one of the first computers being released with the 960M. For the RAM, six, excuse me, 12 gigs, 1600 megahertz DDR3L. It does max out at 16 gigabytes so there's a little room for upgrade there. We do have one open MSATA slot and a one terabyte hard disk drive that's included on there. That's removable too so if you rather have all SSD in there definitely can do it. Comes with a DVD CD as standard uh, it can be upgraded, so if you need Blu-ray reading or writing capabilities, it's available to you. For the wireless card, Intel's 3160AC, Windows 8.1A is pre-installed. For the warranty, it's your standard two-year U.S. warranty, including one-year accidental damage protection that does have to be registered within the first 30 days. MSI also includes a one-year global warranty, no accidental damage included with that. So for our dimensions, we're looking at a 16.46 across. 10.61 deep and 1.54 inches in depth with the lid closed. 6.6 .6 pounds, that is including the battery in there. And we'll have a look at the computer, get a little bit more in depth with it. We'll take a peek at the logo on the back real quick here. You'll see the MSI logo on top and right underneath of it is their Dragon Gaming badge. You can see it is lit up. Let me zoom in on that for you here so you can get a little bit better look at it. Yeah, I'll turn off the light real quick as well so you can check that out. Okay, we're gonna take a look at the viewing angles as we normally have the colorful gradient is up. I've seen a little flickering on there but not quite sure what's causing that. Really the first time I've seen that. I don't know if the camera's just not liking the screen. I don't see it in person, that's for sure. It's just coming up and occasionally. But we'll go ahead and, and really just keep an eye on the colors here because what we're looking for is any type of washout. Um, the screen is, again, a 1920 by 1080 matte type screen. I believe it's a TN panel. Have not seen any indication it'd be otherwise, but let's spin it off to the side here. We'll go to the left. We're really looking for a viewing angle, any color wash out there. And let's go ahead and move it over to the right. I'll do that slowly so you can see if the colors change, how they change. But even for being a TN panel, uh, the ones that we've been seeing coming out within the last year, two years, have had really good color on them. Not as accurate uh, as an IPS screen, but you know, typically a little bit faster response time on there and you can get you know some better gaming performance on there. All right, that's left and right. Colors didn't look too bad, especially in person. Uh, the vertical lines there showing up might throw you off a little bit, but let's see if we can get rid of that. We'll pull it forward to us and watch for any color shift there. Right around there. And slowly open it back up and I'll lay it down. And that's as far back as it goes, so it doesn't lean back very far. You can see here. So I'd say overall on it, not great, not bad, just your typical LCD screen on there. But I don't think any issues to worry about. We're just taking a closer look at the keyboard right now. Uh, I'll mention the touchpad too here. So you can see it's just pretty much lined up straight across. A little chrome bezel goes around. There is no separated left key or right key. So it's just one flat piece. You would just touch where you need to or you could just tap right on the uh, actual touchpad itself. And then let's check out the keyboard. Now, just casual typing, no flex. Pressing down, definitely flex if you try to make it flex. All 
All right, so that'll really get us a good look at the keyboard and what you'll get with it. Let's have a look at the keyboard here. As you can see, it is zoned and backlit. You can adjust the colors as you need to with a built-in utility. It's made by SteelSeries and it's a full-size keyboard. So it's gonna have the number pad off to the side of it. Uh, to turn it on and off the different brightness levels, you'll see right up here, there's a button. You probably can't see it right now, but if you hit it, it's gonna go off. So you can see a few different settings. So there's off, the full, and then more of the left side, kind of if you're concentrating on gaming, those will be lit up for you. So let's turn them all the way back up. And then also if you have function and plus and minus on the number pad, you can see it will change to different presets. So you can see the colors there are changing. to change those there's going to be a built-in utility it's already installed you'll see the msi dragon logo right there you just click on that and then you'll see your utility start up and then what you want to do is just click right on your utility the klm keyboard light manager and that'll get that pulled up and then you can adjust them uh, the dual colors wave breathing uh, audio gaming normal the different zones and changing them two different colors there. So that's already built in. You can adjust it to however you want to. All right, we're going to take a look at the ports that are around the computer. We're on the back left-hand side. The very first there's that's your security. That's your Kensington lock. Your AC adapter plugs in right there. And you have the exhaust port, left-hand exhaust right there. HDMI out. A couple USB 3.0 ports. And then your audio. So you have your microphone and your headset out, followed by your memory card reader. So secure digital card. You can plug that in right there. These are going to be our activity lights here. Let's see if I can get a focus. Here we go. Starting on the left-hand side, that's going to be your hard drive indicator light. So anytime there's read and write, that's going to blink at you. Catch a Bluetooth indicator, Wi-Fi indicator. Uh, the battery logo lets you know if the AC adapter is plugged in. It's not, so that's why it's not lit up. The A is for your caps lock. The 1 is for your num lock. And then lastly, sleep mode. So if you have it closed and the computer's in sleep, that will light up for you. So we'll spin it off to the right-hand side here. Let's see if you can see. Let me get focus here. There's a USB 2.0 port, your optical drive, and as mentioned, that's a DVD CD. It is upgradable, so if you want Blu-ray, we can put that in for you. Another USB port, and that one with a power indicator shows it has power through, so if your computer's off, you can still charge a device through it. You got your VGA out, Ethernet port, and going around the back, pretty plain there, so nothing going around on the backhand side. So we're starting back on the left-hand side where we started off. So that shows you the ports around the computer. Boot time. Well, let's take a look at the boot up time. I have my phone set up, set at zero. I'll hit the start button at the same time as I hit the power button. And I'll do my best to stop it as soon as we get to the desktop. Let's check it out. Three, two, one, go. And this is from a cold boot, so it's not hibernating or anything like that. No sleep mode. And again, it's a one terabyte. That's what the OS is installed on right now. So uh, any of you SSD users out there know you get a lot faster boot times with a uh, solid state drive, whether it be one of those or adding an MSATA drive to it. There we go, 46.7 seconds uh, for a boot up on the hard disk drive. Uh, again, to get faster boot times, overall snappiness, program startup times, get a solid state drive in there. You'll definitely appreciate it. Let's jump into the BIOS to see what's available to us. The computer is off. 
I'll turn it on and just spam the delete button. And with most notebooks, we don't expect to see a whole lot of options here. So starting on the main page, we have our system date, system time, SATA information, which shows you the hard drives and optical drives installed into the computer. System information, which shows you your BIOS version, EC version, the CPU, and the RAM that's installed. We have our advanced tab, which has a PCI latency timer, and where you can uh, change your SATA mode type. It's AHCI with a single drive. If you ended up doing a RAID configuration, there's that. There's the RAID option. You can enable or disable the Intel Speed Step Technologies Supercharger. We have our UEFI BIOS update. USB configuration where you can enable disable legacy support, a few other options on here as well. And our network stack, enable or disable. We have our boot menu, which lets you pick if the number locks, uh, the numbers are on or off. Fast boot, enable or disable. Boot mode select, UEFI, and then your boot priority. So USB drive, optical drive, uh, hard drive on there. Got our security where you can set the admin password, you user password, and our secure boot menu. And that's about it. The next one is save and exit. So if you change anything, you want to keep that, obviously so select that. But I don't want to, so I'm going to discard changes and exit. And I'm going to confirm it. And then it'll just reboot right into Windows for you. All right, it's time to start running some benchmarks on there. We're going to start off with 3D Mark Fire Strike. Kind of excited to see how this one does. It's the first computer that we are reviewing that has a GTX 960M in it, so it's going to be cool to see the results on it. Um, I have my microphone, excuse me, my decibel meter there set up so you can see how the decibels ramp up. I'll put the microphone down there so you can also hear it. We'll be overlaying our FLIR images over there so we can show you where the heat is going to be generated from it. Uh, and of course, we'll go over the numbers. I have a uh, hardware monitor running in the background, so we'll be able to look at the temperatures of the CPU and the GPU, and, uh, and of course, go over the actual results of the 3D Mark itself. Okay, here's our results for 3D Mark Firestrike. You'll see the graphics card is not recognized. Uh, that's because it's brand new. So once it is released on the market, hopefully uh, 3D Mark will get updated and I'll show it. But again, it's the GTX 960M. So we see a score 4032, graphics score 4415, physics score 7321, and a combined score of 1736. Let's take a look at our temperatures. I had hardware monitor running here, so let's see the CPU. So here we go, max temperatures 87, 88, 89, so upper 80s, definitely not bad. And there was no GPU, it wasn't picking it up. So I was prepared for it and had MSI Afterburner running in the background there. Can't really see it, let me zoom in here. Still tough to see. Let me see what it says in person here. 90. So we got 9.0 as the max GPU temperature out of there. That could always be a little bit lower. Maybe some better thermal compound. IC Diamond will help that temperature. Uh, we'll get around a couple more benchmarks and we'll see if the temperature stays the same. If it goes up and down, maybe it's a different uh, workload on it. Um, but that's going to show us our 3D Mark Fire Strike results. All right, Skydiver is finished up, so let's take a look at the results here. We're looking at a score of 12,258, graphics score 14,078, physics score 6,991, and a combined score of 14,611. So let's take a look at the temps that we got this time here. First, take a look at the CPU. 
we're looking at pretty much the same, 88, 89, so identical there. And the GPU temperatures, again, a little, little dark there, but we're seeing 93, so even higher here. So we saw 90 on Fire Strike, 93 on Skydiver, uh, so definitely higher than ideal. Um, but, you know, not to a point where you're going to have to worry about too much out of there. Maybe get a notebook cooler, prop up the bottom a little bit. All right, 3D Mark 11 is finished up. This is going to be the last one we're taking a look at. As you can see, the score is the P5334. Graphics score, 5,266. Physics score, 5,226. And a combined score of 5,445. So, temperatures on the CPU. Again, right where we saw them before, 89 all the way across the board here. GPU temperatures, 93. So the same as that we saw on Skydiver. So that gives you an, uh, an idea of the results that you're gonna get and the temperatures that you're going to see. Take a quick look at Crystal Disk to see the speed of the hard drive that's included. One terabyte, 7200 RPM. You see the sequential read speed is 125.3 megabytes per second. The write speed 116.7 megabytes per second. And then we'll take a look at the 4K 0.461 megabytes per second read and a 0.905 megabytes per second write speed. All right, let's pop open the bottom and check out the internals of the computer. This one does have a removable battery, which is right here. Just unlock, slide it over. The release hatch here and lift that away you can remove the battery i've already unplugged the ac adapter so there's not uh, power going to it right now and this is a smaller panel so you're going to see it right around here that's your perimeter a few screws one two uh three four maybe four that's it maybe five but once you've taken those off a good place to start is right back here you'll see the little arrow you can lift that up and it'll pop up can take that away and get to the hardware into the computer. We're going to start right here. That's your hard drive. So that's your uh, two and a half inch hard disk drive. You can keep that in there, put SSD in it. You have your two RAM sticks in here. There's 12 gigs by stock on this model. So a four gig and an eight gigs in there now. If you want 16, you can definitely add it to it. Right above it is going to be your GPU. And you can see the heat transfer pipe going off this way. Got the CPU over here. Honestly, I might be wrong on that, so don't quote me. One, one is the CPU, one is the GPU. I can't really tell which one right now, uh, but you can see there heat transfer pipes going off to the fins and the exhaust vent, and that's your fan on it. As we go up here, this is going to be an open M.2 SSD slot. Obviously, you can see the SSD is right there. Now, the previous versions had two slots available, and it was back in here, but we're not seeing a second slot there. Um, there is your Wi-Fi card there, but we took a look down in there, so this might only have one SSD drive in it, but we'll have to, you know, a little bit digging further that might change. So we'll just say one for sure right now. So going off to the right, as mentioned, this is going to be your fan and the exhaust port here your fins there just a couple speakers right on the front and that'll take care of the internals of the computer all right guys that's going to finish up our look at this msi computer as always thank you for checking it out if you have any questions leave some comments below or contact us directly the website's exoticpc.com that's x-o-t-i-c pc Dot com. You can give us a call. The phone number is 1-877-289-9684 or reach us in our live chat with real people replying to you. We are available from 9 to 5.30 Central Time, Monday through Friday. And be sure to subscribe and like. And as you guys keep on watching them, we'll keep making them. So thanks for spending some time and checking out the computer. Again, let us know if you have any questions.